Julian Thompson, former Jaguar design boss, has been announced as director of the new GM Advanced Design Europe studio to be launched in the Midlands at the end of this year. How did Thompson help Jaguar flourish and progress? Will Julian Thompson be able to revive General Motors? Stay tuned to find out all the important unanswered questions we need answered. First up, who's Julian Thompson? He sketches cars and watches them come to life. He admires our automotive past and thinks about his future. He has a large collection of interesting cars that he modifies, revives, and frequently drives. He frequently attends car shows and photographs the vehicles he sees, both as a whole and in individual parts for his own amusement. This is undoubtedly Julian Thompson, most famously the designer for Lotus Elise S1 and who has helped steer the renovation of Jaguar's styling for the past 21 years is completely immersed in car culture outside and inside of work. Thompson joined Jaguar in 2000 as its advanced design director and worked closely with Ian Callum for 18 years. He began his career in the auto industry with Ford in 1984 after acquiring a degree from the Royal College of Art. Thompson spent a limited stint working for the Volkswagen Group during his 12-year employment with Lotus, which lasted until 1998. He rose to the position of head of design and contributed to the development of the Lotus Elise. Next up, how did Thompson help Jaguar flourish and progress? Thompson was a follower of Callum, so significantly he left as quickly as the new management looked to update the Big Cat's wardrobe. Thompson was a respected and well-liked car designer who worked at Ford, Lotus, and Volkswagen before joining Jaguar in 2000. It's safe to say that Thompson played a significant role in the group that gave Jaguar its current image. The R Coupe, a 2001 two-door styling experiment, was one of the first projects to emerge under Thompson's leadership as Jaguar's advanced design director working alongside Callum. He's most keenly known as the man responsible for the authentic $18,995 Series 1 Lotus Elise during his term as head of design in Hethel. Callum tweeted his reaction when the news first broke of his successor's departure, quote, so sad and disappointed to see Julian Thompson leave Jaguar Design, especially at a time when Jaguar needs directors of such a high caliber, leadership skills, and talent. I wish Julian the very best for whatever he does next. He will be sorely missed. Sadly, his services as Jaguar were too short-lived. Next off, how will Gary McGovern redefine Jaguar for the electric era? This has been the most crucial question in British car design circles since January. Then CEO Thierry Boller appointed McGovern as the chief created officer at Jaguar. McGovern is considered to be a spirited, innovative, and headstrong man, preferably fit for the job. A few weeks after McGovern received his promotion, Bellore surprised the automotive industry with Reimagine, a radical plan for sweeping change at JLR. For Jaguar, it suggested major changes, but it suggested a progressive path for Land Rover. What would Jaguar models look like after 2025 if SUVs weren't the future and saloons weren't in demand? Was the 86-year-old sports and prestige car marquee about to move to the margins of production? Numerically speaking, like Aston Martin and Bentley? Would Jaguar still be able to refer to itself as a sports car company despite its illustrious Le Mans 24-hour history? What would be made of the cherished 1940s to 1970s history that was so frequently used to support the business's present? These choices suddenly put McGovern in the spotlight. Next up, is General Motors profitable? The 104-year-old car maker, which was previously bankrupt, is doing well. Now General Motors is one of the most established and prosperous American automakers. Along with Ford, GM had a 50% market share in the US at its heights and the largest automaker in the world. Though its four main brands, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, it is currently the largest automaker in the nation. In recent years, GM has commenced initiating its new environmentally friendly electric cars, especially as sales for its larger SUVs have seen steady declines. In 2017, the company debuted the Chevrolet Bolt as its first all-electric vehicle. Additionally, GM is focused focusing on identifying its weaknesses and the industries where its rivals have an advantage. As it strives to strengthen its Cadillac brand and broaden its range, the automaker has its sights set particularly on the luxury model, a niche, where rival German automakers excel. General Motors CEO Dan Akerson expressed that GM has no choice but to jump on the clean energy electric car train if it wants to keep up with its rivals. The automaker has long been known to reel in majority of its sales success from its line of appealing full-size pickups. Pickup trucks. 
Next off, why did General Motors fail? General Motors is one of the great titans of US industry, and it's not any pleasure to see them go into bankruptcy. A time came when GM stopped making profits, companies failed when they stopped turning a profit. There is a profit if sales are higher than costs or expenses, and a loss occurs when sales are less than costs. Since that time, GM has lost more than $90 billion through the first quarter of 2009. In most manufacturing companies, when sales go down, some of the bigger costs go down as well. GM has tremendously fixed costs, such as its union contract. Closing a plant, for example, did not necessarily mean the workers lost their jobs, so when sales went down, many costs stayed fairly constant. Due to the mounting losses in the weakened economy, GM was no longer able to operate as a profitable company. Despite receiving billions in government assistance, GM's only option is to file for bankruptcy and attempt to reduce those fixed costs through a legal process. General Motors had to exit Australia, New Zealand, and Thailand to save costs in the underperforming markets and better hone its focus on growth markets as well as its electric vehicle and self-driving car strategies. After the financial bank Lehman Brothers and the telecoms company WorldCom, GM is the largest industrial corporation to ever declare bankruptcy in the US and the third largest bankruptcy overall. Next up, will Julian Thompson be able to revive General Motors? Former Jaguar Land Rover design director Julian Thompson will head up General Motors' advanced design studio in the UK. To streamline American architecture, Julian can influence GM design with elements of Europe, especially as the automotive industry transitions to electric vehicles, EVs, of which Europe is very selective. He shared his thoughts with Autocar that has now been researching the possibilities of such a studio since January, and an official announcement now appears to have validated his findings. Thompson stated that he's working to assemble a capable team. Since January of last year, the designer had been researching the General Motors lineup. However, up until this point, his position has remained a secret. According to Thompson, he admires the most recent advancement made by the Cadillac brand and aspires to copy the Corvette's chic style. He claims that the GM Europe 8 dealer will collaborate with the USA, Korea, and China in addition to Europeanizing with current models. Quote, we will be a kind of brain center and contribute to everything that happens inside the base ship, he affirmed. Next off, will GM go all electric? To revitalize the Buick brand, in the US General Motors Co. will convert every Buick vehicle to electric propulsion in the coming years. The transformation will begin with an electric crossover SUV in 2024. According to Buick, which will offer some exclusive features and a renewed look at while being less pricey than GM's Cadillac EVs, last week GM announced their objectives to go carbon neutral by 2040 and offer 40% of the company's US models as battery electric by the end of 2025. This is a $27 billion investment in the next five years. However, the experts say that upfront capital cost has been the biggest deterrent to most consumers adopting EVs. GM CEO Mary Barra gave NBC News correspondent Tom Costello an exclusive tour of the enormous new facility devoted to producing battery-powered electric vehicles on today on Wednesday. The tour included a redesign of the renowned gas guzzler Hummer truck. President Joe Biden decided to tour the facility as he praised the bipartisan infrastructure bill that he inscribed into law Monday, which contains funding for a nationwide system of charging stations for electric vehicles. Barra is optimistic that there will be consumer data for electric vehicles, including a Hummer that will be able to travel 350 miles on a single electric charge. Next up, what is the comparison between GM and Ford? The two biggest automakers in the country are Ford Motor Company, NYSEF, and Chevrolet, which is owned by General Motors Company. Ford and GM are both market leaders and fierce rivals in the world of automobiles. The name brand Ford is the biggest brand for Ford, whereas Chevrolet is the biggest brand for GM. Ford and General Motors may appear to have similar business models, but there are key differences between the two companies. The following is a comparison of Ford and GM's business models, which describes critical factors for potential investors. Both businesses were impacted by the 2008 credit crisis, Ford declining a government bailout, while GM accepted it, both businesses have since recovered. Ford's brand strategy has been to scale back and only globally recognized brands for the automaker are Ford and Lincoln. 
Ford and GM both make electric cars, but GM has embraced the technology the most. Since January, Thompson has been studying GM's product lineup closely. He says that he's especially excited to join a company with such long and important design traditions. Would you choose between a Jaguar or a General Motors car? Did Julian Thompson make the right decision? Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.